What's the deal, y'all? Shane G back once again with another episode of Politics as Usual right here on the Ethan. Yeah. What up, though, y'all? It's your boy Shane G. Once again, we are back with another episode of Politics as Usual right here on the Ethos Media Network. Of course, make sure you like, you share, and you subscribe for all the latest content. Now, what I want to talk about today is a post that uh, I, I actually made on Reddit, and the responses were very interesting. Now, they were not what I expected at all. I was expecting a shitstorm when I posted what I posted. But ironically, a lot of the people that you would think disagreed with me or would have disagreed with me actually agreed with me probably more than the other people who felt like you'll see what I'm saying. You'll see what I'm saying here in a minute. Um, but we're going to get into the discussion of a word or a phrase, I should say, that is very overused. And, uh, but I think it is kind of the perfect word to describe what I think this action is. And that is virtue signaling. Now, virtue signaling, for those of you who are unfamiliar with the concept, because it is sort of a relatively new thing that, you know, has been being discussed. Virtue signaling, as I understand it, is basically when you do something purely for one of two reasons a to make yourself feel better and to make yourself feel like you did something when you really didn't and b what's the second thing that uh <laughs> oh the second is um that you want to look good in front of other people so those are really the two reasons that one would quote unquote virtue signal so some examples of this are, I'll start with Democrats, because I feel like Republicans will probably take more uh, of an issue with the video, despite all of the stuff I'm going to show you guys. But um, I think they're going to have more of an issue with this video, most likely. So I'm going to start with the Democrats virtue signaling. Uh, the Democrats virtue signaling would be Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer and all of them wearing kente cloth and kneeling to quote unquote show solidarity with the black community but do nothing when it comes to the police laws which are the thing that caused the whole black lives matter movement and all the protests and all of this kind of stuff right it was about police brutality so since that's what this is about it's not about wearing a kente cloth and kneeling that's not what this is about. What it's about is, are you, you guys, people who are in positions of power, Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer, the rest of Congress, are you all going to actually change laws to disincentivize police from killing unarmed civilians? I'll take it off black people for a minute, just unarmed civilians. If you guys look back at the video I did where I was critiquing Joe Rogan and Tom Segura, um, that was kind of the whole takeaway of the video was... Let's take race out of it. Let's just make it about unarmed citizens versus police. And the numbers were drastically uh, in favor of the police when it comes to those interactions. Right. So I believe the numbers and I'm just kind of freestyling spitballing here. Go back and actually look at the video if you want the real numbers. But I believe that in the 10 year period where 6000 citizens were killed by Unarmed citizens, mind you, unarmed citizens were killed by police. I believe it was 6,000. It may not be unarmed. Let me just say citizens, just to make sure I'm as accurate as possible um, without looking at the actual numbers right now. I believe it was in a 10-year period, it was over 6,000 citizens were killed by police. And in that same time period, between five and 600 police were killed by citizens. So... um. The numbers are drastically uneven. The Democrats kneeling and wearing kente cloth is a virtue signal because they don't plan on doing any real action to change policing in America. That's a virtue signal. Another virtue signal along the same lines is uh, we'll make Juneteenth a holiday. OK. You could do that. That's what's up. What else? Like, but how does that help us? We get extra day off work. That's cool. We can barbecue a little bit. That's cool. But then what? Right? So that's the issue. That's virtue signaling. Now, 
on to the subject at hand. Virtue signaling when it comes to the military. Uh oh. <laughs> now let me just say this also before I get really into my my deep dive, right? When I speak about the military and my problems with the military, I am very rarely, if ever, speaking about soldiers or airmen or Marines or sailors, right? I'm not speaking about the entry level people in the military. I'm not even necessarily talking about their direct superiors because at the end of the day, everyone's just following orders. When I speak ill of the military, I'm speaking first of the president because he's the commander in chief, all those top generals who he, you know, uh, constantly surrounds himself with. Those are the people I blame because those are the people actually making the real decisions as far as what these soldiers do. I'm a worker, which means I'm an employee, which means I understand that when you're on the lower end of the spectrum in any given organization, whether that be the military or a job or whatever, there's a certain amount of shit you just got to eat, even if you don't like it, because you haven't risen the ranks to be able to call shots yet, essentially. So until you're at that rank, you're sort of at the will of other people. Now, of course, you could quit the military, but they call that going AWOL unless you're honorably discharged. If you go AWOL, that's illegal. They'll lock you up in a military prison. So, like, you know what I mean? Like, the way that they make the commitment, it's not like you can just back out when you want to. You know what I'm saying? You either got to get kicked out or you have to be injured to the point where they, you know what I mean? Like, it's always some shit like that. So, I say all of that to say that... I get really annoyed when I see a particular type of virtue signal in public dealing with the military. Again, I am not blaming soldiers. I'm not blaming none of the lower ranking members of the military. I entirely blame the actions of the military on the top ranked generals and, you know, commanders and whatever their titles are and the president. And then the advisors of the president who are making these, you know, decisions. But ultimately, it stops with him. He's commander in chief. So those are the people I blame when I speak about the military. So I just want to be very clear when I say that up front. Now, on to Reddit. I posted, I think people are virtue signaling when they go out of their way to thank veterans for their service. And I continued that by saying, especially people who had the opportunity to serve and chose not to. You don't really fuck with the military like that. You just want to feel good about yourself for saying it. And then I put an edit here because I was responding to a few people in the comments. Um, and so I just felt I should address it to everybody who comes across the post. So edit. I said this to a few people in the comments, but I feel I should address it. I'm not talking about people who come from military families or people who have a close loved one who died in a war or anything like that. I'm speaking about people with no connection to the military, but feel obligated to treat people like heroes because they enlisted. Or people who will fuck other dudes' wives and girlfriends with no issue unless their man's overseas serving because then it's morally wrong. Shit like that. Right? That's my post. Now, this one did pretty good. 12K views, 280 comments, 188 likes, right? All right. So this is the interesting part, though. This is the part that shocked me. And I think it's going to shock a lot of you, too. You're going to notice a pattern here. Let's see all the comments. All right. First comment. Nope. Let's 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 do this in order. Old. Absolutely. This is the first comment responding to my thread. Absolutely. I read an article one time where a vet said all the thank yous and attention made him feel uncomfortable. That is going to be a very common theme that you see here throughout the rest of this thread. I'm not going to read everything. There's 200 something comments, but you are going to notice a pattern here. And I'm not really skipping out over anybody intentionally. 
Okay, this is a legit pattern. So the next guy, who is a veteran, says, made me feel uncomfortable too. Like people would walk up to me on the street and shake my hand and thank me or slip me money or just otherwise. I'm not sure how to say what the problem is. Disrupt the flow of my day, basically. Like I imagine the barista feels after being asked for her number all day. It's tiresome and I have to like put on this face and accept it. They obligate me to perform unexpected emotional labor, I guess. Like I'm out trying to enjoy my free time and they force themselves on me with, hey, that job you do is sure some job. Work, work, work. Thanks so much. And sometimes it feels performative, like they're making me a prop in their story in front of their friends. Mostly it just sucks. Send me a drink at the bar. Comp a small meal. Pay for my snacks at the convenience store. Offer a seat on a crowded bus. Do something to improve my limited off-base time instead of creating a hollow-feeling interaction that forces me to do what feels like work on your behalf. So those are the words from a veteran. So he basically agrees with everything I'm saying. Again, you will notice a pattern. So I actually here I'm going to I'm going to go to the next cuz this is kind of a a thread within the thread y'all know how Reddit does so I'm going to go to the next main comment. But here's this. I am uncomfortable when people thank me for my service so I don't advertise it. I don't own any hats or clothing or anything and I don't have bumper stickers. But I do have my veteran status on my ID and sometimes people thank me if they see it. The benefits of having it on my, D I, on my ID far outweigh the negatives, but I still don't love it. I also don't stand up when asked to at sporting events or whatever. The only time I ever did was at Veterans Day concert my daughter performed in. My wife told me that my daughter, who was only like eight at the time, wanted her friends to see that I was a vet. So I stood for her. But then a bunch of people thanked me and I hated it. I am not at all ashamed of my service, and I enjoyed my time in. I don't have PTSD or anything. It's just that my service was selfish, and I don't feel like I deserve thanks for it. I do see the thanks for what it is, though, and appreciate that others are trying to be nice. So, again, we have a whole long, nice, nice paragraph that basically says, I don't like when people walk up to me randomly and just thank me. Oh, I absolutely hate the attention and go out of my way to not let people know I served. My dad, on the other hand wears a hat and jacket and gets thanks all the time and even had a guy buy him a beer at a festival this weekend. So two different examples of it. The younger guy's like, I don't want nothing. I don't even want people to know I served. And his dad's like, I want everybody to know I served. <laughs> so that's the first military person in this thread so far that is like, no, I like it when people do that. Let's see. I am a vet and a fireman. I completely agree and hate the thank you for your service comments. I don't even know how to reply. Your welcome feels weird and like I'm too proud of myself. I told someone else I don't need to thank you. They already paid me for said service, but that wasn't taken well either. It's just awkward. Granted, I'm generally a fairly awkward person and autistic, so maybe it's just me. I appreciate the people that want to say it. I just don't enjoy these interactions at all. So all the vets so far are saying, we don't like when people walk up to us and just thank us for our service randomly. That's four out of five so far that I've read. Let's see. Let's see. Let's keep going. I joined to get away from an abusive household. I don't know what to say when people say when people thank me like I didn't do it for you, which is another thing. That's you know, let's I, I want to address that actually. I want to address that point right there before we move on at all. I find it. I think that's the conflation or at least a big part of the conflation when it comes to average citizens versus military people, average citizens. And when I say that, I'm, I'm talking specifically about the type of people who would walk up to a service member at a grocery store when they're minding their own business and just, oh, I just want to thank you and grovel at your feet because you were in the military for a certain amount of time. Um, you don't know anything about that person. You don't know what they did. You don't know why their reasons for joining were. A lot of these comments, which I'm going to pull up some more of those too. A lot of these comments are saying things like, I did it because I was going to be homeless 
and I knew that they would pay me and I could get some benefits or I knew I'd be able to pay for college cheaper. So that was the route I went and I didn't want to be in a bunch of debt or I wanted a way to be able to travel around the world. And I knew I couldn't just do it on my own dime and I knew they'd pay for it. There's so many reasons that the veterans themselves list in this thread that basically dispel the whole I wanted to do it to fight for my country and be a hero to people. And I just, I love America so much. And so I will do anything to defend this great nation of ours. Nobody said that nobody in the thread said anything even close to that. Everybody. And I'm talking about the veterans themselves. I'm not talking about the people who have opinions of the veterans because there's plenty of people who are in there basically saying I'm wrong, even though every veteran, except for, not even one guy. It was a guy talking about his dad who's a veteran. So every veteran on the thread who spoke said they hate it. They're like, I don't like it. It makes me uncomfortable. It's awkward. I don't feel like I deserve it. All of these different things, right? There's like four people that I was reading comments of. There's probably a little bit more than that. But there was like four people I was reading their comments and they were basically all like, fuck what you're talking about. I'm still going to thank them because that's what I was raised to do. And I'm like, that in itself is why it's a virtue signal. That's why it's called virtue signaling, because you're not doing it to show appreciation for the actual vet. You're doing it because it either makes you feel better about, hey, I said, uh, thank you for your service to a vet today. So I'm a good person. It's either that or, hey, y'all, look at me. I'm a patriot. I said, thank you to the veteran. Y'all see me. Y'all didn't say it. I said it, though. So, you know, I'm better. I'm a better American than you. It's one of those two. That's it. Those are the only reasons. Outside, again, of people whose family were in the military, they come from a military background, or their son died in a war, and they feel like that that's the best way to honor him and keep his memory alive. Like, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about just your average, everyday person who there's they, they don't know anybody in the military, or maybe they have a friend who went to the military after high school that they don't even talk to anymore. And these are the main people who want to walk up and say, thank you for your service to the veterans. And here, let me buy you a drink and let me do all this nice stuff for you. But then they'll walk over a homeless veteran on the street and tell them, get your shit together. You're a bum. That's what happens. So my question to all these people who love the military so much is like, are you volunteering at any veterans programs? Are you donating money to any veterans? What are you actually doing? What action are you taking? If you love them so much, because this is their claim, this is why they go out of their way. Like, I don't see this with any other profession. I don't see anybody walking up to teachers who have like uh, a, some paraphernalia from a school on or whatever. And they're like, yo, are you a teacher? Yeah. You know what? Thank you for your service. You're doing a great thing out here. I don't see that happen with firefighters. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't I don't see it. Unless it's like they just saved you from a burning building type shit. Then you're all, oh, thank you so much for your service. You know what I mean? But if a firefighter is walking down the street in uniform, you might be like, yo, fire and fire, that's, that's kind of a dope job. Huh? It's dangerous, but you know, y'all, you know, like it might be that. You're not going to go, thank you for your service and what you're doing for this community is so wonderful and blah, blah, blah. Like your, your sacrifice is so, you're not going to do all of that. You're not doing that with EMTs who literally save people's lives. They don't take them. You know what I'm saying? Like they're saving people's lives. Nobody's going out of their way to thank EMTs to be like, you know what? Yo, you didn't save nobody I know, but you, you save people. So I just want to say thank you. Nobody does that. They only do that with so with, with service people. And that's what I'm trying to get to the bottom of. So especially considering that apparently they don't even like it. So let's keep going. Um, let's see here. Right here. I used to work in a military museum and I had such a hard time with this. We had a lot of volunteers from the community who were just huge fans of the military and they'd thank any and everyone in any kind of uniform. Meanwhile, I worked there 
during the summer while getting a history degree and was not nearly as patriotic as most of the people there. I just didn't feel like I need to personally thank any individuals for their part in the disastrous U.S. wars in the Middle East. I respect their work and their hardships, but I could never bring myself to say thank you to them individually. And one of the guys who volunteered there was a veteran of the war in Iraq, and he had seen some things and lived through some terrible stuff. He had seen his friends die in front of him. He could never volunteer on days when we had reenactment events because of his PTSD. He was some kind of broken. I liked him and we hung out sometimes, but it felt so wrong to me whenever anyone said thank you to him. It felt naive and misguided. And I said, you are saying exactly how I feel. Because again, although I don't blame the military service uh, members, you know, in the, each of the four branches. I don't blame them for what they have to do. I don't like it either, though. I'm not going to celebrate it. You get what I'm saying? Like, I can understand the sacrifice that it takes to be in the military and be deployed. And I I, I understand it. I, I can respect that aspect. I can respect the skills that you learn. I can respect the camaraderie. I can respect the teamwork. Excuse me, but, you know, I can respect a lot of aspects of it, but I also know that we killed over a million Iraqis. And I also know that at least when Barack Obama was, uh, was president, there was certain periods where 97% of all of our drones were killing civilians. I also know that within the first month, I want to say, of Donald Trump being elected as president, we dropped what's known as the Moab, the mother of all bombs, I believe, in Afghanistan. So. This is this is what our military is doing. Um. So, yeah, I I don't celebrate that. You know, again, I I celebrate the hard work. I celebrate the X, Y, Z's. I don't celebrate that. And that's kind of like the main shit of you being in the military. You know, that's that's kind of why you're there. (laughs) You know what I mean? That may not be your personal reason, but that is why they have you there is to kill if necessary or to die if necessary. So I found that being randomly approached while in uniform and forced to have a scripted conversation with someone multiple times a day was tiresome, regardless of how sincere they seemed. I did appreciate a drink, uneven split on a cab, being offered a seat or a cut in line or other small offering to improve my limited free time. Agreed. My father is a Vietnam veteran and he doesn't even like to think about the war. I've never been comfortable approaching vets like that because you just never know how they might feel about it. It just seems intrusive. And then this person, who we had a little back and forth, so, you know, I'm not going to shit on them or anything. Shout out to shattered underscore Kit Kat on Reddit. They respond, or maybe they were raised by someone to respect the military. Maybe they were unable to join. So right there, I was like, oh, you didn't read my post clearly uh, because I said uh, had the option to join and chose not to. If you're unable to do something, that that sounds like there's not a choice involved in that. So, you know, let's get that out of the way immediately. I gave you that out already. (laughs) I said those who could have joined and chose not to. I was very specific in my wording for that reason. Maybe you shouldn't be so judgmental. Cool. Seriously, I come from a very military family. Okay, address that also. Again, this was after the edit. Or the edit took place after this comment. So to be fair, seriously, I come from a very military family. Both of my grandfathers were Navy. Both my parents were Air Force. My brother was Army. My son was Navy. I thank ver- veterans when I see them. I've watched too many people leave to go to war and come back completely changed. Again, to me, that's why you shouldn't want them to go. Like, why are you celebrating the fact that they go and they come back completely changed? Why is that good? I've raised my daughter to do the same. She will never be able to serve either. Not everyone is virtue signaling. I think you're just being pessimistic. I responded. 
I am very pessimistic. I'll give you that. I should have excluded people in military families because I actually understand that. I mean people with no real connection to it. Then that person said, that I can give you. I have seen some messed up people. Okay. So then somebody responded to that person and said, maybe you should take your own advice. Everything about your comment up to the last sentence comes off as super judgmental. But I don't, I, I, I don't think so. I think that person was just telling, telling their experience. Um, my dad was Navy. He was on one of the LST seen in the photos where they were leaving the ships to storm the beaches at Normandy on D-Day. He was 17 at the time. My brother was also Navy. He was in Desert Storm. If I see someone who's around my dad's age and obviously a veteran, I sometimes strike up a short conversation and thank them for their service. You can kind of tell if, they're, if they'll be receptive to it. I do it out of respect for them and for my father, who I lost a few years ago. Again, I'm not talking about you. <laughs> I am in not in any way virtue signal. I am truly grateful knowing what my father went through. Again, to be fair, this comment, I believe, was left before I made the edit. So, again, to be fair, I didn't exclude military families at this point when this comment was made. But since I made it now, again, you'd lost your dad in the military. and You feel like that's the best way to honor him is through thanking veterans. I can't judge you for that. <laughs> I would never. I'm not going to judge you for that. That's reasonable. That's not what I'm talking about. I think a lot of people did purposely misconstrue what I was originally trying to say, which is why I put the edit in. I worked for Sprint for years and we offered decent military discounts for much of that time. A lot of times even special plans and deployment benefits. There were they were a very military friendly carrier. Part of the sales pitch you build up over the years is asking every single person if they ever served. And to go down the line when they say yes was usually along the lines of nice. Well, I thank you for your service. And now I can make your bill a lot cheaper. People were usually pretty chill with it when you're offering them discounts. We'd also get brand new recruits about to ship off to boot camp signing up for the special plan so that they could FaceTime home. And they loved the attention because why not? They were all teed up to go and hadn't actually done anything yet. But that was all in the sales setting. I remember it being becoming normalized in my head enough that I actually said it a couple times outside of work to just random people. And it was super cringe. It just felt fake and showy, like an I stand with profile picture of the week on Facebook. I dropped it quickly. My advice, if you don't know that person well enough to know whether or not they would appreciate it, then you don't know them well enough to be making comments about their life in the first place. Leave them be. So the Redditors that are responding that are not veterans, they're kind of a mixed bag, right? A lot of people agree with me. There's a few people who disagree with me. That's okay. You know, I'm okay with a disagreement. You know, I just feel like some of the disagreement that I was getting was, like I said, not from the place that I was speaking from. They heard what they wanted to hear and then just kind of decided to argue almost against a straw man that wasn't ever really presented so i've seen people make a show of it in front of others and that feels disingenuous right here i'm a veteran i served in the army from 17 until 27 until i was emmy bead uh iraq twice and guantanamo bay I, I make sure that now i see that old man in a vietnam veteran hat i shake his hand vietnam vets were spit on when they came back he likely didn't get welcome back so i thank him i go to the va and i see all kinds of old men in their vietnam baseball caps i stop and i shake their hands on the other hand I hate being thanked because I didn't engage in combat. I sat on a COS and was mortared, but didn't fire my weapon. I have nothing to be thanked for. When thanked, I say, please don't thank me, and I keep it moving. So my reply to him was, I'm asking this respectfully. I'm not trying to be insulting in any way. But do you see a conundrum with being thanked for using your weapon? Like, does being in the military take away the morality of killing someone else who is likely also simply following orders? Or do you genuinely feel bad for not killing anyone? The response was, no, I'm glad I never used my weapon. And I responded, that's what I was hoping for. So.
veteran here. You are 100% correct. I don't wear anything signifying that I am because it's embarrassing someone stopping me and saying that. It was a long time ago. I volunteered. I did more than some, less than others. Yawn. Sometimes I can't resist and say, hey, I was young and I needed the money. This person's replying back to me. They says, exactly, they definitely are, meaning virtue signaling. I used to work in a coffee shop near a base and people would trip over themselves and others to rush to pay for the coffee for anyone in uniform. Really embarrassing. One time, this guy had a three-minute argument with a woman who wouldn't take no for an answer. Eventually, I just comped his coffee to end it for him. Like, bitch, if he repeatedly denies your offer and you keep insisting, you're not doing it for him. You're doing it for you. And you're not a grateful American. You're a pest. I was in the military. There are a lot of jerks and not so nice people in the military that shouldn't be lumped in with all the military worship out there. My godfather is a decorated Navy vet that retains a bunch of clearances to this day. It blew my mind the first time he called someone out for thanking him for a service. He was buying beer and used his military ID since he had lost his driver's license while out shopping. Immediate response? Yeah, no, you don't know me. You don't need to thank me. It's kind of weird that you feel like you should. Another veteran. I'm going to end it here. Because there's a lot more. I want you guys to actually go check it out. Um, you can find me on Reddit at Shane GMWC. And uh, this is in the Pet Peeves Reddit. So this is the last one I, I want to read. Because, again, it's just a lot more of the same. It's a lot of veterans basically saying, yeah, you're right, bro. We don't like it. And then other people basically saying, we're going to do it anyway. Or I do it because, despite if they like it or not, I'm going to do it. So, last post. This is from Mr. I assume Mr. John 2046. Funny you mentioned that. Funny you mentioned the people that had the opportunity but chose not to. Myself and a friend, both veterans, were just talking about this the other day, but we have a theory that the reason so many people worship veterans to the extent they do is that they regret never joining themselves, so they feel like they're obligated to show support to an extreme to make up for that. And I put this theory of yours makes perfect sense. So with all that being said, what did we learn today, guys? What did we learn? Uh, the thing I'm trying to teach that hopefully y'all learned is that sometimes you may think you're doing a kind act. You may think you're doing something respectful. You may think you're doing something honorable. All of those things, right? All I'm asking is why are you doing the things you're doing? Are you walking up to random vets at the grocery store or at the pet shop or whatever? You know what I mean? When people are just minding their own business, doing their thing. When you walk up to them and you say, thank you for your service. You know, I appreciate your sacrifice. Why are you doing that? Are you doing that to make yourself feel like I'm a good American because I thank the soldiers whenever I see them and that's what I'm supposed to do? Or is it a, I feel better about this because I did it. It doesn't really matter the results. It's the intention that matters kind of thing. You, you get what I'm saying? Like, at the end of the day, if you give somebody a gift, right? Like, let's say I buy, let's say I buy somebody a, a, a gold chain. If I buy them a gold chain and they're like, hey, I appreciate that, you know, but I don't really wear gold. And then I get mad at that person because I'm like, I bought this for you and you don't want it. What? That's about me. That's not about them. Because if I bought something for them and they didn't want it, then oh well. If I buy something for you and I get upset that you don't want to accept it, that means I did this because of the feeling it's going to give me to 
see you happy or to see that I did something for you. Or maybe it's just so that I can brag and say, I did this for such and such. It might be a thing that I can hold over your head. You see what I'm saying? So not only does intention matter, but actions matter too. You know, I, I tend to, on most things, try to side with whatever the intent was because the action might come out wrong, but you meant well, right? In this case, 280 people, probably half of the replies are veterans. They're all saying the same thing. All of them are all saying, we don't really fuck with it. Can you please like stop? If you're going to do something like, can you just like buy me a drink and keep it low key or, you know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, I'm, I'm asking y'all when you walk up to the strangers in public and thank them for volunteering to do something that nobody made them do, they chose to do it. Why do you feel so obligated to thank them? And I know a lot of people will say, because they're protecting my freedoms. And my question is how? And I mean that literally, like, how are they protecting your freedoms? Did the military run up in the, uh, in the CIA and destroy all of the stuff that allows them to spy on us and bypass the, whichever amendment is the, illegal search and seizure one you know what i mean you have to have a warrant to be able to spy on people and stuff like that's violating our i believe second amendment rights right to privacy no second amendment i'm stupid second amendment is guns duh whichever amendment y'all know what i'm talking about um it's been a long long week at work (laughs) um but yeah one of the amendments addresses you know illegal search and seizure right to privacy All of these type of things, you know, right to a fair trial, all of this kind of stuff, right? Well, when all of those rights were taken away, when they took away habeas corpus, um, when they made it legal, essentially, to spy on everybody, like, where was the military at protecting our freedom? Oh, they weren't there? Oh, okay. Um, How did my freedom end up in the Middle East? (laughs) That's something else I want to know. How did my freedom end up in Russia? How did my freedom end up in Ukraine? I felt like my freedom was here. So unless the theory is if we don't offensively attack all of these places and get them before they get us, eventually somebody's going to take over America and completely do away with everyone's rights. Like that has to be the line of thought here. Otherwise, what freedoms are you protecting by going on the other side of the world and killing people? I want to know. So I don't even buy that excuse when people say that, when people are like, well, it's because they're protecting my freedom. How? Tell me how. If you can explain how a military person is actually protecting your individual freedom or your family's freedom or your city's freedom or your state's freedom, give me something. Give me something. That's all I'm saying. If we're not going to be out thanking firefighters and teachers and EMTs and lifeguards and you get what I'm saying? Like, if we're not going to be out there thanking these people, why is it only the military that we go out of our way to thank? And this is the last question for the fellas, because one person got really confused over what I was trying to say. So let me just say it. Gentlemen. Why, and I'm talking to a very specific segment of men out here, men who are comfortable sleeping with married women. I know a lot of y'all. You know what I'm saying? I know a lot of y'all. I've never been one of you. Well, there was one person who was separated, but they were going through a divorce. So that's a little different. But outside of that, You know what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't, you know, that's just not a thing I typically engage in knowingly, right? However, a lot of guys that I know who will do it knowingly and not care will back off the second that they find out, yeah, my husband's in the military and blah, blah, blah. 
well, whoa, you didn't say that. Oh, well, I can't really do this with you then. And it's like, wait a minute, you were willing to sleep with her knowing she was married. And that was cool. Once you found out the husband was in the service, all of a sudden it's disrespectful. This is what I'm talking about. Where is that mentality from? I don't get that. Why are military people put on such a high pedestal? Even the veterans in the comments were saying it. We don't deserve to be worshipped. All this military worship is getting out of hand. What's up with the worshipping of the military? Like they were using that word. I didn't say the word worship one time. They were using the word like, yeah, we don't need to be worshipped, God. Like, so my my final takeaway in all of this, I've been rambling for 40 minutes. So let me let me get it out the way. First takeaway is um, why are you doing certain things? Are you doing it to make yourself appear like a good person? Are you doing it to make yourself feel better as a person to make you feel like you accomplished something without actually doing anything? Or do you feel like this is truly the best way to show your appreciation to people who you feel like sacrifice for you? That's number one. Number two, veterans don't like it. Find a different way to show your appreciation if that's what it is. If you're actually just trying to show appreciation and it's not a virtue signal, it's not a look at me, look at how good of a person I am, look at how good of an American I am, look how good of a patriot I am. If it's not that, then it has to be that you feel that this is the best way to show them appreciation. Well, if they're all telling you this is not the best way to show me appreciation, find other ways. I, I guess those would be my two main takeaways. Think about why you're doing things. Are you doing things for you? Or are you doing things for the person you say that you're doing them for? Just think about that to yourself. Number two, veterans don't like it. So if you're doing it for them, stop because they don't like it. <laughs> okay. Now, granted, I have a very small sample size in on Reddit here. It's not like... You know, I uh, polled a thousand veterans or anything like that. It's 280 people and maybe half of them are veterans. But I do think that me just randomly making a post at seven in the morning saying, I think people are virtue signaling when they randomly uh, walk up to the military and say, you know, thank you. For the amount of comments that I got in this a little over 24 hours now, um, you know, almost 300 comments, comments still rolling in. My phone's been buzzing. So. You know, shout out to all the Redditors, you know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, if you're not doing it for the person that you say you're doing it for, then it's really ultimately a virtue signal. And hopefully this will be the last video where I have to say the words virtue signal this many times because I really don't like that phrase. But it's kind of the only thing that really encapsulates what I think you guys are doing when you just do that randomly. I think it's performative. It seems disingenuous. And like a few people said, it's like you're making them a part of your show rather than genuinely thanking them for, you know, a good job that you think they did. So keep all in mind, you know what I mean? But this is Shane G. This is Politics as Usual right here on the Ethos Media Network. Once again, make sure you like, you share, and you subscribe for all the latest content. Go ahead, follow us right there. You know what I'm saying? at Ethos Media Network on both threads and Instagram. And uh, outside of that, I hope y'all have a good week. Check out OTI, check out Bar Exam, and I'll catch you on the next one.